Hello, everyone. Welcome to day six. I'm Alicia, and today we're going to talk about resistance and releasing your resistance to life, to life, and to your situation. Okay, so there's so much here to talk about potentially. I want to talk about the principle, and then and then give some some practical examples, but I want to help you think about this principle so that you can look at how it, how it applies in your life, right? So acceptance um, is a powerful spiritual, I don't know if you would call it a, a value or a truth or an aspect, but um, I like to say it's right up there with faith and gratitude. Um, and you can, you can find a really empowering state from which to live when you can accept where you are now, be grateful for the blessings that you see, visualize the future you want to have, and be grateful that you can speak that future into existence and that within the spiritual truth of reality and time, um, that future that you desire already exists and it will come to you. Um, uh, a friend once told me that from back home they had a fun saying, they say, which is that which belongs to me will come to me. And I love that. I love that. That kind of speaks to the essence of this. It's just kind of this sense that this acceptance of what is and what will be, um, when you study the spiritual teachers and the, the different texts, they talk about how when we focus on, on the past, we... Um, well, I don't know. They talk about how the ego focuses on the, on the past. And when you focus on the past and identify with the past, you create a present and a future that is the same as the past. And when you focus on the future, you keep yourself from living in the present moment. Um, and yeah, this, this is a tricky. There's so many thoughts here, so bear with me. Okay, when... When we're trying to force some force something, or we're striving, or we're feeling when we're feeling separate from connection and separate from everybody and lack mindset, and we feel like we're on our own and we've got to do it all ourselves, we're in this forceful pushing energy, which is it's not good because it's not how we're meant to be. It's not our true state of being it goes against who we really are and it goes against how the universe works um and so when we're resisting reality we're going against nature we're going against what is we're going against spirit we're we're fighting um when we when we resist things we, when we can't accept things Resistance comes from the ego, the, the human nature, the rational thought, the, the false self that is created by our separation from God. Okay, so it's important to learn to recognize your resistance and to not to battle with it, but to wrestle with it, to interact with it, to acknowledge that it's there and to realize that you have a choice. Um, as you, as you choose to adjust your identity and you shift kind of your sense of like who you are from your ego to your soul, from just being a human body um, to being a spirit in a human body, as you begin to make that shift, that will empower you to make this mental shift from resistance to acceptance. And when you're, when you're resisting life, there is a wealth of insight in that that you can unpack that will help you move forward. Um, when we're numb or when we're too busy, 
we we can't see it or feel it or hear it. And so we can't wrestle with it and we can't change it. Um, so that's another opportunity that we have in this time where so much has been stripped away and we have more time to, we have, <laughs> we have the mental space to, to face ourselves. And I think sometimes in our modern life, because we're so blessed and we have so many opportunities, we have the ability to avoid what we don't want or the people that we don't want or whatever. And we can run away from things and we can fill our lives with being busy. And so I, I really see how in this time of slowing down, it's an opportunity for us to face ourselves, but that is hard. It is hard because we've identified mistakenly with our wrong, the wrong of our, of our two inner selves. They, we've identified with the wrong one. Um, I think that's the, I just have to see if that's the sitter. <laughs> it's my brother. Um, I will call him later. So resistance, there's this, yeah. So as we, as we go on this journey inside of ourselves and we seek to find a better way, I want to speak to you about acceptance. And acceptance is the energy of faith and trust and resting and being at peace and connecting with the universe and allowing God, allowing spirit to show you a bigger picture. Um, I was talking about the story the, the day or two ago um, in one of the earlier videos about the stories that we tell ourselves and yeah, the stories that we tell ourselves and it really matters the story that we tell ourselves about why we are at home. Um, and I just put a video up, up on my page about how it matters that we're at home. We're staying at home to, to protect those who um, are not done living their life, but are who, ver who are very susceptible to this particular virus. And it's up to them to, it's up to us to help protect them. Um, anyways, I'm off. Back to acceptance. So resistance is this pushing and striving. And acceptance is this receiving. And um, yeah, when you really get onto this journey, um, oh, that's where stories we tell ourselves. Okay, so I'm getting, I want to go deeper. I'm like circling around it. I want to go deeper into some stuff that's a little more challenging. So it's harder to talk about because I'm afraid of what you'll think, but I love you. So I'm going to share with you because this is so exciting. Okay. So I've been reading people like Carolyn Miss and Gary Zukav and well, James Hillman and, uh, and the guy that writes about myth. Anyways, they talk about, um, yeah, myths and stories. Okay. They talk about the soul and how you have an eternal soul that knows why you're here, that existed before you came into this body and will continue to exist. And if you want more on this, The Seat of the Soul by Gary Zukav is, is a good place to start. It's, it's a bit thick. It's an incredible book. I found it because I was checking out Oprah's Super Soul Sunday videos, and he was the first episode, his book. So Oprah loves this. This is not super far out there. She discovered it and she's been trying to help um, get kind of this concept of spirituality, spirituality out there. And I'm sold. I'm on board. And I really, really, I really want to help those of us who came from a Christian background figure out how to grapple with this and kind of, I want to build a bridge to this. So if this is kind of um, a little bit foreign to you, just, just go with me. And if it helps, you can think of this as a myth and a story that just helps us tap into a different perspective about how we view our lives and the meaning that we give our lives and the stories that we tell about our, tell ourselves about our lives. Okay, so he talks about how our soul knows why we're here. Our soul agreed to come 
to this place right now to be in this lifetime. Your soul chose your parents, your soul chose where you would be born. Whatever difficult, unfair, awful circumstances that you have been through that you may or may not receive at this point, that you may not be able to accept about your life, the truth is that your soul chose it and your soul was okay with it and your soul had a purpose for it. Um, yeah, Carolyn Miss and even Wayne Dyer, they tell some really, really incredible stories about people who seem to be terrible, but they facilitated this incredible journey of growth in someone else. And these spiritual teachers look at that and they say that those two people had a soul contract for the one to be awful to the other um, in a certain way to facilitate a certain growth so that they can learn a certain lesson, so that they, they, they were a catalyst for this thing to happen in the other person's life. Um, for example, Wayne Dyer's father was, I think he was an alcoholic, but he, um, he just abandoned his family and he just never knew his dad. Um, and he didn't, he didn't forgive his dad until after his dad had passed away. And Wayne Dyer just tells this really incredible story where, like, he he has clearly, regardless of what you believe about it, Wayne Dyer took his life and his story. I read his memoir. It was really good. It's called I Can See Clearly Now. Yeah. Um, but he he created this incredible story for himself that his dad was meant to be that for him, to teach him the value of self-reliance. Wayne Dyer grew up in foster homes for like many, many years before he was able to live with his mother and his brothers again. And he looked at all of that and he said, I learned self-reliance and it set me on the path to become the teacher that I became to help millions around the world. Like Wayne Dyer literally positively impacted and changed the lives of millions of people. And he says, my dad had a soul contract to help me become that person. And I forgave my dad. And now I feel my dad's presence with me and we're good. I'm at peace. This is supposed to happen. And I won't go into other examples, but I've heard other people. So I just want to encourage you that like, I, I had questions too about pain and suffering and why do all these things happen? And I'm not going to solve you, solve that for you in the next few minutes, but I will tell you that even without knowing the details, you can practice these spiritual principles and learn some of these concepts and change the story you tell yourself and you can come to a state of acceptance that the universe is so big and so good and then in the big picture, everything works out. In the seat of the soul, Gary Zukav talks about karma and I'm still wrapping my head around it, but I get it, I get it enough and I believe it enough that it's really, really, really given me peace. And I've really come to a state that like, I don't want to lose any of my loved ones, but it would no longer, I'm no longer at a state, I'm no longer at a place where it would destroy me and it would destroy my faith. I would grieve and I would move on, but I trust that there is a much bigger, a bigger story, a bigger overarching narrative of the, of the universe. And I believe that we are co-creators with the divine. There is destiny implanted in us. I talk about that some in my book. We're going to talk about it more at some point when I come back to talking about the field. But there is destiny and implanted in you. You have an energetic imprint on you that represents your potential of who you're going to become. But at the same time, you choose what that looks like and where you take that. So I think that's a good introduction. All of that to say... There are two super powerful, not opposed, but I want to say like yin and yang or black and white or kind of like the mirror image, mirror opposites or whatever. There are these two super powerful opposing, for lack of a better word, forces in the universe and in your being and always available to you. And there is the resistance to life to circumstances, to good, to challenge, there is a resistance that is always speaking to you, that is always available to you. But then there is also a divine acceptance and a promise that God is good, that life is good, that spirit is there, that 
assistance, divine assistance surrounds you and is always available to you and that you can find peace and purpose in any struggle and through the midst of anything. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stop there and go a bit deeper on that tomorrow. So think about that exercise for today. Practice being aware of your resistance and challenge yourself to consider what accepting um, these different things would look like. What, what it would take for you to accept some of the challenges in your life or to accept um, some of the tasks that are just in front of you to do that you just may feel like I just don't want to do that. Um, and yeah, we're, we're going to keep going on this tomorrow. So I love you. Peace be with you.